Each week it is my pleasure to bring you original, compelling, and important shows that address the issues and concerns of uh, the indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere. On December 6, 1492, Christopher Columbus landed at Mole St. Nicholas in Haiti's north. Thus began a totally new phase of life on the island of Hispanola. And most people are aware that, that, that Columbus landed at San Salvador October 12, 1492, thus discovering what they claim to be the new world for Spain. Less known is that his second fall, landfall, was at Mole St. Nicholas, Haiti. On December, in December 1492, or that the first settlement in the New World was La Navidad, which is located on Haiti's north coast. This settlement, which housed sailors from the Santa Maria, which sank off of Haiti's coast, was founded December 24, 1492. Columbus did not discover a lost or unknown land. There was a flourishing civilization of Native Americans. The primary group was the Arawak Taino Indians. Arawak is the general group to which the Taino belong and describes especially the common language that this group of Native Americans shared. They range from Venezuela through the Caribbean and Central America all the way to Florida. However, the particular group of Arawak-speaking Indian who lived on the island of Hispanola, they were the Taino Indians. Tonight my guest is my close friend and brother Roberto Macaru Barrero, President of the United Confederation of Taino People. And we will discuss what really happened to the Taino people of the Caribbean on American Indians Truths, the most dangerous show on radio. You're tuned to WPFW 89.3 FM Pacifica Radio. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, if you wish to make a donation to WPFW to help keep it afloat, the bare minimum donation is a $35 pledge for a one-year membership of WPFW. And then, like I mentioned, we have four copies of the CD, Dance of the Mountain People, Indigenous Taino Music. And that album was made by my guest tonight, Roberto Macaru Barrero. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to WPFW 89.3 FM, American Indians Truths, the most dangerous show on radio. My guest for this edition of American Indians Truths is my good friend and my brother, Roberto Macaru Barrero. And he is the current president of the United Confederation of Taino People and the chairperson of the NGO Committee on United Nations International's Decade of the World's Indigenous Peoples. He is a former radio host and producer for WBAI, Pacifica's Radio, Circle of Red Nations, and an internationally respected advocate for the rights of indigenous peoples. He was on the staff as senior program coordinator for public programs in the Department of Education of the National Museum of the American Indian for more than a decade. A cultural consultant, Makaru, has shared his experience in various capacities within the United Nations system, as well as with nonprofit and for-profit entities such as PBS, BBC, the Smithsonian's institutions, National Museum of the American Indian, the Institute for American Indian Studies, and the Aveda Corporation. I'd like to take this time to introduce some of you and 
to present again my brother and friend, Roberto Macaru Barrero. Welcome to the show, bro. Uh, thank you very much, brother. Good to hear your voice. It's good to be heard, and it's good to have you with me tonight. Thank you. Did I miss anything? Is there anything else that I need to add to your bio? Oh, no. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be here, and, uh, yep, you know, uh, as you said, I'm a Roberto Mucaro Borero, and um, I'm just uh, real delighted to be with you this evening and, and uh, have an opportunity to share a little bit about my ancestral culture and uh, the beauty of our people and maybe um, some bits of history that folks might not be used to or aware of or Absolutely. even know about. Right. Let's, let's get down to a, a discussion. I got some questions for you. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Who are the Taino, and why are they important in the history of this hemisphere? Well, the Taino people are the indigenous people of the Caribbean island region, or at least one of the, Taino, one of the groups of indigenous peoples of the Caribbean region, and probably the the largest and, and most widespread community. Our traditional homelands encompass the, uh, really encompass the larger Caribbean islands, sometimes called the Greater Antilles, also the Bahamas, and even parts of southern Florida. But we have settlements and relations and community connections all the way down, as you stated, through the Lesser Antilles, and into South America. And um, you mentioned uh, that, that we were part of the, the Arawak uh, group, and, and uh, in a way, yeah, it's correct to say that, although we should be clear that Arawak is like a, a general term used to describe uh, language and culture, and that when people are talking about Arawaks today, uh, most of the time, they're referring to a group or a community that uh, lives in Guyana, uh, Suriname, and even uh, some parts of Venezuela, uh, who are also known themselves in their own language as the Locono. Uh, Arawak was a term, at least the way I understand it, Arawak was a term that other another tribe gave to the people, and then um, Europeans picked up on that uh, particularly uh, British and uh, historians and uh, started to call people Arawaks and then that extended to the to the language group so when you say like uh, Arawak language there's really no Arawak language per se there are many languages in the Arawak family and we're we all uh, seem to be coming out of one one trunk one common root like uh, sort of in, in a way you can compare it to the way Latin uh, is like the root of the Romance languages, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Italian, mm -hmm, etc. Mm -hmm, Different mm -hmm. languages related, and sometimes you have those linkages uh, with words. Why we're important? Well, you know, we're all important, Jay, but uh, I think in, in this discussion, in this, in this uh, bit of a history lesson, that many people know about Columbus and the story of Columbus, but far fewer know about the people, the original people that he encountered that first uh, gave him shelter and, and showed him hospitality in this hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about Columbus, Columbus Day, yes, everybody knows that, and he met the Native Americans, and the next thing you know, you're talking about the Maya or the Aztecs, right? And then talking about or focusing on the alleged uh, sacrificial happenings and, and all the other stuff that goes along with that. But you miss out on, on that real history of the Caribbean. Even in the Caribbean itself, that history is, is sparsely taught, taught from the view of colonizers, uh, taught with a lot of speculation, assumption, mm -hmm. bias, and prejudice. Mm -hmm. But uh, the main point I want to get to all this is that the Taino were the first indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere to encounter uh, Columbus in 1492. We were the first to be called Indians. Mm -hmm. in this hemisphere, and also the first to suffer the ravages of colonialism in this hemisphere. So it starts there. The cycle starts in the Caribbean, that 500-year cycle, right? Absolutely, and, and within that, that, that whole cycle, uh, 
the introduction of uh, enslaving uh, Taino or indigenous or American Indians started right there with the Taino people when he made his first trip back to Spain with a boatload of gold and Taino people that he in, had enslaved and shackled and chained to the bottom of the ship. There's, there's another one, one of the infamous first uh, for our people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, people have to understand that you know, some people say, "Well, why didn't the, why didn't the Taínos kill him right away?" And you know, and they, they would have been done with it. And you know, you hear the, those kind of like out, mm-hmm. outlandish uh, mm-hmm. you know responses when when you know and I know that our people thought differently. They had a different way of looking at life and the world, and and uh, not everybody was just uh, thinking along those lines. You know, when they met these Europeans. They were looking at them as new trading partners, right? And, mm-hmm, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, you're making a stone axe a certain way. It takes you a few months to make, to get it sharp. It goes dull often, and then somebody comes along with a metal axe and shows you that. Of course, you say, hey, this is a lot easier yeah. than what I'm doing. So maybe we can make some relationship here and, and, and trade with these folks. And, and right from the very beginning, the, the, that kind of connection, that interaction was happening between the Taino and uh, people of Columbus's crew. The problem is, is that while we were looking, or our ancestors were looking to make those relations, to make that extension, uh, to make uh, uh, new pathways, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Columbus and his crew were looking at it in a in an economic sense, right? They were looking at the people, at the resources as commodities. Remember, he was coming out of uh, that whole region. In what was in an emerging Europe, it wasn't even Europe yet. It wasn't even really Spain yet. It was just emerging. Mm-hmm. Um, that region was coming out of an 800 to 900 year war with the Islamic nations, also called the Moors. Right. So they were looking at, at ways to recoup a lot of that money that they lost, and and uh, one of the ways that they were thinking of recouping was by exploiting the resources in the newly discovered for them Western Hemisphere. Now we spoke. You spoke earlier about traditional homelands of the Taínos, um, and you talked about the Big Islands. Let's talk about let's talk about Cuba, and let's talk about uh, uh, our our home, Boricua. Yes, well, Big Islands, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Boriqueño, or, mm-hmm. or uh, what we know today as Puerto Rico. Then you have uh, what you named as, as Española, which was a name, another name given to the island. That was known as Haiti. It had a few names. It was a large place, mm-hmm. but it had a few names. Haiti, um, Boio, which is a Taino word for home. Mm-hmm. They, they heard it called that, too. And also Kiskeya for the eastern uh, portion of the island. And then, of course, uh, Cuba. Some people say it was called Cubanacan. Mm-hmm. And then also Shamaica or Jamaica today. Mm-hmm. You know, all these are, are the original homelands of the people. And remember that... What I was telling you about uh, academics and the application of labels should make us a good uh, example of that because for years they were referring to the indigenous peoples in Jamaica as Arawak, right? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. as we realize and as things change and as, as the academics and uh, new uh, philosophies and theories and, and, and new discoveries come in, things change and now they understand that those people who were in the island, those ancestors are Taino people, and they're even celebrating a, a Taino Day nationally in Jamaica now. So, you know, mm-hmm. Irie and, and uh, good for them, and, and it's good to raise that awareness about the First Peoples, and uh, we look forward to kind of more initiatives like that in the island to keep raising the awareness of the First Peoples, of the real history, of the colonialism, of what makes the Caribbean what it is today, and that includes the slavery, that includes the exploitation of indigenous peoples, the exploitation of resources, and the uh, continued uh, oppression by larger countries in the, in the region. Absolutely. I'm going to take a pause for the cause right now. This okay. is WVFW 89.3 FM, Washington. I need, uh, I have four of, of uh, Roberto Macro's CD that you heard played earlier. Only four. And we're offering them for a $65 donation to WPFW. Pick up the phone and call us at 202-588-9739. Or you can become a member of WPFW for a mere $35 a year. So pick up the phone and call us at 202-588-9739.
Or if you wish to make some bigger donations, that's fine. It's a tax write-off, 202-588-9739. Now, um, uh, Makaru, um, are the Taino related culturally or linguistically to other indigenous peoples such as the uh, uh, those of us that are known as the American Indian um, you know, since they were in southern Florida, I know they had to have some ties with the Seminoles. Um, take us on that journey. Well, we have to look at the Taino people like we look at the islands themselves. And those islands are, are not isolated. If you look on a map, uh, maybe that's something that people will do during your show or after. If you look on a map, look, look at the Caribbean, look at the islands, the way that's set up, and you could just really see how that whole Gulf, Caribbean, the uh, Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, you know, it, it's really forming that hoop, right, from North America, the Bahamas, the Caribbean islands, going around the Lesser Antilles, the top of South America coming around, Central America and Mexico. Really, that's the sacred hoop right there. Yes. You know, because all of the continent, all of the hemisphere and the islands are, are have that interaction and, and connection, and we know. And now academics and archaeologists and, and other folks are starting to catch up to the oral traditions of the region. But we know that our people have been in contact and in communications and interchanging and exchanging from time beginning, you know. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, people's stories affirm that, whether you're talking about the Mayas, uh, different, different Mayas from the East Sides to the Lacandon, or you're looking down south at, at, at the, the Lacono, the Wayu. The, the, and on all the rest, it goes on and on, Jay, but even yeah, up yeah. into the north, uh, you can even see um, connections to, to our culture, even amongst the Cherokees, a certain way that the original drums, those log drums, those slit drums right. that the Cherokees use, we use those as well. We call them Mayo Huacans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you see all those connections. Our community in, in southern Florida... Those peoples were spread out in some of the outlying islands, and also it was documented that near where the uh, Calusa people were, mm -hmm. there was a settlement of Tainos as well, coming up from, from Cuba. And, of course, probably from all different places because our people were going back and forth, and it, that, that was the thing, right, between the Tainos. You know, our people expanded, and we were so widespread across that region. Uh, because of a specific strategy that our elders had, right? Mm -hmm. They, unlike the Spaniards, uh, who who sought to expand by making war, right? Our community was really based on your diplomatic abilities, right? Your your, right. your way to, to work out problems with the least amount of casualties, right? Absolutely. In, in other words, it wasn't it wasn't the goal to wipe everybody out. It was, it was the goal to really expand your family relationships so that when people go on trips from community to community or island to island, there wouldn't be those bows raised up, right? Mm -hmm. And say, who are you? And then you could say, hey, well, I'm related to your sister's cousin, this one, that one, and the other one. You know, So th that expansion took place throughout the Caribbean up into uh, the area of southern Florida, and that's why uh, from some Seminole people that, that I've uh, encountered over the years, we've found some similar uh, words and even the same words uh, of Taino in, in that language as well. But why I want to say that, why I wanna, what I want to make clear is that, you know, that migrations or, or however you want to look at the peopling of that region was not a one-way street. There was not a one-way sign going up the islands, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, you, you hear from some academics that, oh, well, we've come in waves from South America, and that's how we supplanted, you know, some earlier communities and this and that. And mm -hmm. you know, they're really trying mm -hmm. to make it sound like we we're just as bad as they were, you know? Yeah, but, and, but, 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 what uh, but we know, know that's not the case. Yeah, but what do they know? <laughs> exactly, right? So that's why we're here, Jay. That's yeah, why we're here. Absolutely. You know, just to set the record straight. But our community, remember, Jay, we were neighbors of the Mayas. 
Right. We were, we mm-hmm. were neighbors and contemporaries of, of the great civilizations in South America, the Koyas, the, mm-hmm. the Incas, right? These, yeah. were, these were all the contemporaries of our period. And there was interchange and exchange going on all through the hemisphere. That's why you find macaw cloaks way up in Arizona, right? There's right. no macaws in the desert. No. Why? But how did they get there? That's through the change and interchange. Now, most recently in Georgia, they found some petroglyphs that, that these uh, academics are uh, identifying the closest uh, relations would, would be the Taino people, the, the way they're drawn, the rock art, etc. Mm-hmm. So we know that, that that interchange took place, and we could see it all around. Uh, I mean, comparing the language, languages that are seemingly unrelated, we find similar words amongst the native peoples. Why? Because of that interchange. There's similar games. We played a, a ball game called Batu mm-hmm. uh, in the old days. And still some people are playing it today. As a matter of fact, in Kiskeya, uh, Dominican Republic, there's, there's several leagues that play that ancient ball game, and, and, they're, and they're really rallying the community around that cultural identity and that cultural um, initiative, right? And so we, see, we find that game from the Taino to the Maya to the Hohokam in, in Arizona. So again, yeah, where where we mixed up in there, of course, it, and it worked both ways, Jay, because people were also coming into the islands, which is why Taino. When we say Taino, the Taino language, you have to understand that that's like a a generalization that we make now for our own comfort, right? Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. at that time, there was there was several languages, at least three, spoken in the Caribbean islands, and several dialects, right, between where you were. Maybe folks on one side of the island said something one way, could have even called the island something else rather Mm -hmm. than what the folks on uh, the other other side side of the island called it, right? Exactly, exactly. So all of these things, and what we find is that while Arawak, yes, or the Lokono, or what's what's the closest of the Arawakan peoples uh, to the Taino language, right, Mm -hmm. would be the Lokono people and also the Wayu people, Mm-hmm. Uh, also known as the, as the Guajiros, and they're, they're in uh, Colombia and uh, Venezuela. Mm-hmm. And uh, then again, we r- remember that these other folks that were there are our neighbors, sometimes also erroneously called our enemies, mm-hmm. right? An- mm-hmm. Another uh, form of propaganda pushed upon our people. They were the strong, fierce ones. And the right, Taino, the right. Arawaks, yeah. were the weak and gentle, peaceful ones. Yes, we were peaceful, but of course, you know, we knew about the martial arts as well, Absolutely. as well as any other community in that region. But what I'm trying to say is that our, our region expanded through relationships that were strategically strategically input, right, from village to village, mm-hmm. from island to island, mm-hmm. and throughout the region. So when Columbus goes over uh, to Central America, they find the Taino woman uh, amongst the Mayas, right? Mm-hmm. When he goes to Jamaica, he finds a Mayan elder amongst the Jamaican Taino, right? When it, it, the, it goes on and on, but we, we know, like you say, we know that already, but the idea is to get that information out, that there was a large amount of interchange, and that's consistently verified through the oral tradition, and now science is catching up as they make more discoveries here and there, and, and they start to understand that, you know, what the Native people are talking about is right. true. Okay, what are we going to do now? We're going to play another cut from your CD. Uh, and let me just say one thing for for folks. If you're looking uh, that CD, uh, Roberto Mucaro Bojero, uh, Dance of the Mountain People. You know, this is a this is a gift. When you give that donation to the radio station tonight, it's not that you're paying sixty five dollars for the CD. It's that you're getting that as a gift for your generous donation. So please think about that and really support the station. Support Jay because we need radio like this out there. We need people like Jay Nightwolf telling uh, the real truth, right, about indigenous peoples. Thank so you, really think about that. Right. Thank you, Brian. You can pick up the phone and call us at 202-588-9739. 202-588-9739. And we only have four of these CDs to offer you tonight as a thank you gift. We're going to play another cut from it right now and then come back and talk to Mukuro some more. So don't go away. I'm Jay Winter Nightwolf. This is American Indians Truths, the most dangerous show on radio. WPFW 89.3 FM, Washington.
I know you like that music. I know you like that music. Guess what? Four lucky people tonight that call in with a $65 donation to WPFW in the name of the Night Wolf Show will receive that as a thank you gift from us here at WPFW. The telephone number is 202-588-9739. You can use your credit card. You could go online, WPFW.org, and, and use your credit card there, uh, a secured website. 202-588-9739. The phones are not ringing, and we need some help. Mukaro. Yes. What is the United Confederation of Taino People? United Confederation of Taino People is an initiative that uh, Taino people themselves developed over a series of meetings and months. Really, uh, uh, there was a, a concern amongst the community that there wasn't a place where different groups, organizations, tribes, uh, however people define themselves today, uh, th there wasn't a forum for folks to sit around a table and speak about issues and then try to take action on those issues. And uh, for that reason, uh, the United Confederation of Taino People was founded to really follow up on, on, on some of the concerns and the aspirations of Taino people, to try to do that in the most dignified way as possible. And uh, from, my, from my view, uh, we've been uh, true true to that course uh, since our establishment. Right. What, what type of work does the uh, Confederation do? Well, a lot of it uh, focuses around raising awareness, right? Raising awareness about uh, contemporary Taino people. Uh, also, uh, looking back and revisiting history and representing that in a way that we can be uh, proud of, right? Uh, and, and, that, and that takes various levels of engagement. We work with, uh, as I said, since it's, a, it's, a, it's an entity that comprises different groups, organizations, etc., we work with those community groups to try to help strengthen the on-the-ground grassroots initiatives. But then we take the, the, the larger issues that people are, are concerned about and, and uh, try to deal with those either uh, locally, nationally, or internationally. So you'll, you'll find UCTP representatives at the local level working and supporting uh, a community uh, areto or event, or you'll find uh, some of our representatives making statements uh, uh, or submitting statements to uh, the U.S. Senate on uh, Commission, uh, Committee on Indian Affairs or sitting uh, in, in a meeting of the Organization of American States or at the United Nations talking to uh, various government representatives, UN agency representatives, and, and other indigenous peoples representatives and leaders from around uh, uh, the world. Why? To, to really um, promote and have people understand that we, the Taino people, are still here, but also to join the wider uh, movement of indigenous people in, in the call for for the recognition of our rights, really, and the promotion mm -hmm. of our mm -hmm. rights mm -hmm. at the local, national, and international level. Now, you know, uh, they say, and you know who they are, that all the Tainos were dead. Really? I don't know. I never heard that. Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what they say, okay? <laughs> they even wrote papers stating that there are no more Tainos. Yes. But if there were no more Tainos, why is it just last week that one of our young people became the first runner-up to the Miss Indian World pageantry out at the Gathering of Nations in Arizona, one of the largest powwows put on every year in the Americas? Why is it that Joanne Nanichi, why is it that she was recognized by the American Indian people? Well, again, it, it's our own people, right? Our own people rewriting and representing that history. Uh, Joanne uh, Aniki Morales, uh, we're very proud of her. She's a tremendously brave, intelligent, and just beautiful young woman inside and out. And she's just a, a really epitomizes uh, Taino people, right? And uh, 
we're, we're, we're really so brave. We, we gave her uh, support that we could. But really, you know, she's a warrior, right? Like like most of all of our people are. Like, we have like, to be in these like, days. Like, like, you know, like, we have yeah. to be warriors, you know, and it's mm -hmm. not uh, like, the... Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Like, like Anakawana. Anakawana, you're right, you yeah. know. And, and this is the... the our our uh, homage, right? Our, our mm -hmm. same... But look, you know, who... Can we, you know, Jay, come on, let, let's be realistic. You know, we're not Anakaona. We're not, we're not, the, that, that glory is, is left to, to our ancestors. We can only try, right, mm -hmm. to, to, to make them proud of who we are, you know. And uh, we do that in many ways, and, and, uh, and, and this kind of work is important. What she did was so important because, once again, it shows that our people will not be confined to the dustbins of some archaeological uh, shelf in, in the back room of a museum. You know, mm -hmm. we are living people who mm -hmm. will continue on. Uh, you know, they didn't get us back then, and they're not going to get us now, and we're going to continue into the future. And, and, and we have to be thankful uh, for young people like that who are now taking up the mantle, right, of saying, hey, I'm, I'm not going to allow these uh, negative remarks or some misguided and uh, biased or racist people, really, because if you're saying that there's no Taino, really, you, you know, it, that's, that's a really misguided and a racist statement. Mm -hmm. it, it shows the lack of understanding of the real history of, of the region. And, and you know, you know, they yeah. don't, they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't understand that making statements like that or, 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 or telling an American Indian, you're not an Indian, you're black. They don't understand how deep that cuts into us. They don't understand the insensitivity that goes along with making a racist statement like that, do they? It, it, it's just part and parcel of, of the need for consistent education, Jay. There's a need for radio shows like yours, which is why I hope people are calling in and, and, and making those pledges. But there's a need for for a united confederation of taino people there's a need for uh organizations and groups and and individuals to stand up and say hey you know this is who we are uh, we have to look at that and look look what's happening you know at, at the united nations and and the united nations itself uh, as an entity hasn't really been around that long but within that time you know, we, we've made an impact because why? We, if we don't go to these places, we don't knock on these doors, we don't say, hey, this is who we are and this is what we want, you know, then people are not just going to give it to you because they're, they're just feeling like sorry for you. We already see that if they have it their way, we wouldn't even exist. So we have to write ourselves back in the history book. This is why the UCTP was supporting and, and uh, a campaign in partnership with the U.S. Census Bureau, because oh, one of yeah. our elders oh, yeah. said it oh, really. Yeah. It was, they said it really. Uh, one of our elders said it really eloquently. Uh, Naniki Reyes Ocasio said it uh, a, a few years back. She said, "Look, the same way they wrote us out of history, we're going to write ourselves back in." They are right? right. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's what we're doing. So now, you know, I'm proud to see people like Joanne Nani Morales, what she's doing, uh, how she's going to college. There's other teachers, and, and there's countless. Jay, I can't even, you know, begin to start naming all the folks who are out there every day doing something, carving a, a staff, making uh, jewelry. And don't forget, you know, this is 2012. We have incredible initiatives like the Peace and Dignity Journeys going on, and Taino people are a part of that. We had the first run in Bori King in 2010, which went tremendously, and now we're getting ready for the continental run. People are running down from Alaska, coming up from the tip of Tierra del Fuego, You're right, and meeting right, in the center right, in right. Guatemala. Right, And we're there, the Taino, the first people, we're there as well. So no matter what these archaeological people or academics or, or naysayers are, are promoting, we're promoting something else, and at the end of the day, we will emerge victorious. Absolutely, because we come with the truth and the fact. Uh, we're eternal, Jay. We're with the universe. You that's know? right. That's what they don't get. <laughs> You're right. Listen, <laughs> I want to, I want to thank somebody to call and got one of your, one of your CDs, um, and the person wishes to remain anonymous. You know who you are, and thank you so very, very much, uh, and um, we got three more to go, folks, and we got what? seven minutes 
I want to I want to I want to ask you one more question, actually two, real quick, okay? Sure. And then we're going to have to get out of here. Who is qualified to become a member of the United Confederation of Taino People? I know I'm qualified, and I dragged my feet about sending my application in because guess what? You know, my grandma, she was Taino. And uh, our co-host here, uh, uh -huh. Verona Iriarte, yeah, you know, you she got her membership. Why you got mine? Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we, we are, are based on... Uh, self-determination, right? In other words, we're not telling Taino people uh, who is or who is not. Taino people are telling us, we're documenting that, and we're moving forward as a community. People are affiliated with different groups, with different organizations, but we can rally around the goals of the United Confederation of Taino People. And if you look at those goals, those those aspirations that we put forth in our uh, founding document, I, I, I don't really think people can find fault with them. And I think that that's the main point, that we need to rally around something. We need to get our folks out there. We need to get our message out there. And, and for me, I'm very happy working with, with the United Confederation of Taino People. Uh, there's a lot of good folks there doing tremendous amount of work, many behind the scenes. You don't hear their name often, but, you know, they know who they are. We know who they are. And yeah, we're doing yeah. it for, for the future generations. So, you know, check us out at, at uctp org www.uctp.org and they can get any kind of information and follow up uh, with us and and uh, we'll continue from there right you know what I'm looking for I'm looking for one of our people one of our young people or one of our older people it doesn't make a difference um, uh, to come up with a book and um, may, maybe somebody's already written one but that's what I'm looking for. I can't wait to see a book. Well, I'm working on one. Okay. Right now, yeah, right. I'm working on one, and, and uh, this is going to be a, a new presentation, a new look, a Taino perspective of the history of the, of the Caribbean region and colonialism. You know, we, we, we get caught up in this, Jay. You know, you have to be multitasking at all times. You know, and you have to deal with family issues, personal family issues. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with your community issues and then your responsibilities to the larger community outside of that. And it goes on and on. So in the midst of things, I am working on one. I hope to have that out sometime soon. I'm not sure when, but, uh, you know, I just got my, my CD back out there after a long time and hopefully be back in the studio soon uh, starting to record the next one. It's only taken me a... Uh, quite a few years, <laughs> but I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> but, um, yeah. you know, we, we'll just keep going. And, and there's, there's a lot of stuff written, and, and I, would, I would really recommend, if people are interested in knowing what's happening with the Taino community today, check in with the UCTP. We have our own website. We're on Facebook, United Confederation of Taino People. Check out the news. Check out what we're posting and, and what we're sharing, the kind of information. In that website, you know, uh, community affiliates, uh, can can get a registration and participate in our community dialogues that happen within the UCTP website. And there we talk about language. We break down right. the, the words that we're using today, mm -hmm. issues, you know, let people know about community events and how you could support them. But, uh, you know, these things we can keep going on all night. An hour is yeah. not enough, Jay. We, we need know, to get some more know, time I, to I, focus on I know. the real nitty-gritty of, of our culture. Okay, well, we're going to do that. We're going to do that in September, so you got to come back. I want right. to thank you for being on the show tonight. And um, you get that book out, bro, and I will get you a ticket on the bus to come down here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, brother. All right, give, uh, give my love to your family and to everybody up there and tell them that I love them all, and we'll talk again soon. Okay, you take care, and good night to everyone. Hahom, Diao. Thank you, brother. And I look forward to the next time we have the opportunity to connect in this way. You got it, man. Love you, bro. Love you, too. All right.